Welcome to Vogel Timeline, our quarterly news report keeping you up to date on the latest happenings here at the Vogel 3 and 4 site near Augusta, Georgia. It has really been a busy first quarter here at the site. In April, the first AP1000 reactor coolant pumps arrived by truck from Pennsylvania. Weighing in at just over 187 tons, these pumps help to cool the reactors. When completed, each unit will have four reactor coolant pumps. We now have the first three on site. In May, CAO3 and CAO2 were assembled on site and lifted into the Unit 3 nuclear island. At 52 tons and 237 tons respectively, these components are part of the in-containment refueling water storage tank. The placement of these two components marks a big milestone for the project known as the completion of the Big Six modules for Unit 3. The other four components of the Big Six include CAO1, CAO4, CAO5, and CA20. 760 tons of major components for the Unit 3 Turbine Island were placed in May, which included the deaerator developed in South Korea and the generator stator assembly, which was constructed in Japan. Construction on the Unit 4 site is progressing, with the big news being the completion of the vertical construction of the Unit 4 cooling tower in May. The tower topped out at 601 feet. Internal construction of the tower continues on both towers for Unit 3 and 4. With so much happening on a daily basis, the transition to Westinghouse and Floor has been vital to staying on schedule. The new one-team strategy is already paying huge dividends on the construction site. Recently, we spoke with David Jones, Technical Support Vice President, about the transition. So Westinghouse has completed uh, the transition that began at the first of the year. There were four key focus areas. Uh, first one was the implementation of the WECTEC organization, which is the support organization for the project. Second area was just optimizing the Westinghouse organization. Third area was uh, disconnecting from Chicago Bridge and Iron. And the fourth area was the performance improvement initiative to be implemented by the new organization. And so under the performance improvement initiatives, uh, there were some key areas that, that Westinghouse focused on. It included engineering, uh, the supply chain process, construction, and also they looked at the schedule, particularly focusing on critical path activities and looking at mitigation strategies to improve the schedule on the critical path milestones. And then another area that they focused on in performance improvement was just the floor integration integrating the construction subcontractor to Westinghouse into the Westinghouse organization and into the project. And so through this uh, entire transition process, Westinghouse and Fleur was very transparent with Southern Nuclear and engaged Southern Nuclear and respected our thoughts, our comments, and even our ideas uh, about the transition and areas for improvement. Uh, examples of that included the fact that Westinghouse engaged our Southern Nuclear Project Managers in looking at some of these near-term critical path milestones, looking and uh, assessing where we can improve the schedule and taking Southern Nuclear ideas and implementing those. So, as a result, you can see that the transition has produced positive, tangible results. We see more near-term milestones being achieved by Westinghouse and Floor, which is very positive. And Westinghouse and Floor are proud of this, but more importantly, they're not satisfied with where they are. We all realize there's more work to be done, more improvements to be done on the project. And for example, Westinghouse and Floor are out hiring additional craft labor and more floor leadership such that they can open up more work fronts that can even improve productivity beyond what it is now. Thanks, David, for giving us an update on the latest milestones for the Vogel 3 and 4 project. A well-trained and qualified operating staff is taking shape at Vogel 3 and 4. Successful turnover of systems, components, and structures is already happening in some areas. 
The new Engineering Support Building is fully occupied and houses several departments, including Operations, Engineering, and many more. We recently spoke with John Austin, Training Director for Vogel 3 and 4, to find out the latest on training and other highlights for operational readiness. So 2016 is a transition year for us at Vogel 3 and 4. Last year was a really getting ready, getting our staff, starting getting staffed up in, in a lot of our areas, getting our procedures ready, getting our folks trained. This year is the year where we actually start taking over portions of the plant. Now, one of our first major milestones is the AUX pump house. Well, to get ready to, to take over a system, you got to get folks trained, qualified, understand what they're doing, know what they're doing. And so we went through and did a training program for those individuals to get them ready. So to operate a nuclear reactor, it requires licensed operators as part of that, um, to, to get the plant ready for that. So licensed operators take a long time to get processed. It takes about 18 months of training uh, full time to get them trained and qualified to be able to take on and op operate the unit. So our first license class, ILT-1, is presently in that process now and we're getting ready to get them ready for an exam later this year. So as we build this plant and we need to train and qualify our operators as we go to start building our pool of operators so when the plant becomes ours you have to have a certain number of licensed operators to operate the plant safely. As we transition to operations we have to get our folks trained and qualified that's a key component in training. Uh, we're training right now our maintenance personnel across the site and as our vision is one Vogel our maintenance and our chemistry programs are merging as one common program between both sites to better utilize our resources that we have and also when we get the plants together one day we'll be combining them and the ultimate goal to have one, one Vogel, one site. We still have to focus on construction and taking over the plant first. That's our main priority is to get those milestones behind us, get this new unit on for Southern Nuclear and Georgia Power and be able to take this unit to operations. When we get to that point, then we'll look at the further integration across the Vogel, one Vogel site. Thanks so much, John, for updating us on the most recent developments on operational readiness and transition to operation. The Vogel 3 and 4 project has made a significant impact on the region and state. Currently, more than 6,000 workers are on site as the ramp up on the construction side continues. Recently, we had the opportunity to meet with Maggie Coyo, Electrical and INC System Supervisor. Maggie has been on the project for two years and shared her perspective about what working and living in this community means to her. On a daily basis, my job is to get ready to operate the plant when it's finally turned over to us and also get ready for testing. So I have um, a group of engineers that I supervise and I am there to just provide oversight on all the things that they are doing and uh, giving them the guidance on what it means to be ready to test and ready to operate the plant. The very first building that will be turned over to us and all the systems inside that building, it's the auxiliary pump house building. And so um, my group was in charge of leading that effort for the, all, the whole organization. What we did was just meeting weekly with the different departments, um, talking about what everybody needed to do to get ready for um, this building to be turned over to us. And it was the first step for us to start testing and taking control of this plant. So for me, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to be part of something really big for the nation. I didn't want to pass that just because I'm very passionate about the nuclear industry and being able to, to be here from the get-go really drove me to come to the, the Vogel site. I live in Grovetown, which is about an hour away from the plant. Grovetown is in Columbia County. Columbia County just happens to have one of the best schools in Georgia. So um, I have two kids, two little boys, living somewhere where they can have the best education while I'm pursuing my dream and my passion. Uh, it's a win-win situation for me. With little kids, it just, it just works out pretty well. Within our organization, we also have different, different um, groups. WIN, Women in Nuclear, um, where, you know, as a woman in the technical field, I get to have discussions with my peers and learn about them, and fellowship, and uh, the Citizens of Georgia Power, where we volunteer and help in our community. So just a lot of things that um, make working here at Vogel more than just a passion because I also help the community, and I enjoy it. 
Thanks so much, Maggie, for sharing your story with us. The Vogel 3 and 4 project continues to positively impact not only the region and our state, but individuals' lives on a daily basis. Well, that wraps up this issue of the Vogel Timeline Report. Thanks for joining us for this exciting journey as we build the first new nuclear in the U.S. in 30 years. Have a great summer and stay safe. We'll see you in the fall to bring you more great stories from the Vogel 3 and 4 project.